Okay, so there's been some slight progress since uh, the last update. So I have the, uh, the battery box now fully mounted in the frame and you can see I've got all the batteries uh, fitted there. Still working out what exactly I'm going to do with getting the uh, electrical cabling out of there. But I'm pretty sure that I want the fuse as well as the, um, the current uh, shunt to be inside this battery box somewhere. I did also uh, weld up, you know, cut and weld a cover for the battery box. So that's going to go onto that side uh, once I'm done. And I did start working on a new motor mounting plate because the, the old plate, um, you know, I suppose had kind of cut specifically for the old motor controller. So um, yeah, we'll have a look at that in a sec. But this is all looking fairly good. So we've got good mounts um, up here, uh, welded and bolted into the into existing bits in the frame. I've got the, uh, this, this has a support, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a support uh, bolt just in there to uh, transfer some of the um, weight and the aluminium to the frame. Same on the other side there. And then down here, uh, we've got the, um, I've got a few welded and bolted um, aluminium channels with the uh, the original mounting bolt for the engine going through. So that should be pretty substantial. Uh, back there, you can see we are pushing against the, oops, get that out of the way, down there, we are pushing against the, uh, the motor mount as well with the battery box. So um, it should be relatively stable there. Let's do a walk around to the other side. I don't think there's anything spectacular to see there. This is the, the closed up side of the battery box. So that's looking really good. And then the other thing I did today was I started, I figured out the, with the bigger new motor controller, I was gonna have to do some uh, massaging on the tank. So I'll go and show you what I've done there. Okay, so here on the workbench side, uh, you can see I've, uh, the tank is no longer going to hold any fuel. So um, that was basically required as, because this motor controller is quite a lot bigger than the other one. And to get that to fit comfortably in here as well as leave some nice space for all the wires to come out. And so what I decided to do, I had to cut back, or well, cut some of it away at the back and I had to cut some of it away at the front. But I've left that little bit there um, for two reasons. Firstly, it's nice to uh, retain a little bit of, it's, it helps a lot with the structural rigidity of this thing. And the second thing is I also have um, things like the DC-DC converter that also have to be mounted somewhere on the bike. Ideally somewhere relatively dry. And so basically I figured just on the bottom, just underneath there, doing it left-handed, that can pretty much just be bolted up inside there, which will actually, and then it's got a couple of connectors, so it's easy enough to disconnect if I want to take the tank off. But that, uh, yeah, gives me some more mounting spots there. I can, in theory, mount something up underneath here. And I've left that as well, because you've got two tapped holes there. Always useful to have two tapped holes. So, um, so we've got a little bit of space at the back of the tank there as well. The, uh, the bits that cut out, you know, come out pretty nicely. See, there's a little bit of surface rust. I've left this tank empty. I think it was actually in pretty good condition before I left it empty, so I don't think that's too big a problem. And then initially I had this bit uh, still kind of sitting in there, but um, I didn't want that sharp edge for and a sharp bend on the on the cables going to the motor controller, so I made a smoother cut there as well. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead now and mount that uh, motor controller over there to the to the frame. Oh yeah, so uh, in terms of cutting this out. The two magical tools of choice, one of them was one of these, uh, I don't know what you call them, renovator tools, these um, oscillating tools with a metal cutting blade. This metal cutting blade is many years old and it has cut quite a lot of metal. I just used a little uh, triangular needle file to clean up the teeth a little bit, works fine. And uh, the other thing was just a Dremel with a grinding thing to clean up all the sharp edges, it was quite useful. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. I'll uh, catch back up when there's something new to show.